Well, I've come to North Wales on a rather damp weekend. And I've come here to look at a rather underreported style of tectonics. It's the tectonics of slate belts. And there's nowhere better in the world than to come here to the Welsh area of Llanberis to look at this. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Slate Landscape of North Wales. These quarries in the 19th century provided almost a third of the world's roofing materials and building slabs, an amazing legacy. The slate is exceptional quality, so roofing could be very thin, yet durable. You'll find it everywhere, here in Wales, but also all over the world. This now lies on the edge of Eruri National Park, formerly called Snowdonia. The old quarries dominate swathes of the landscape. These slates are Cambrian in age and yield important insights as to how thick deep water strata can deform in sedimentary basins. So I'm visiting a few classic sites to tell some geological stories about the tectonics of slate belts. Well, you can see why this slate was so highly prized. It's really homogeneous. This really strong, steep cleavage running up the outcrop. But with the eye of faith, you can still see bedding more or less running through here. Hard to pick out because it is essentially weakly metamorphosed mudstones, siltstones, very little lithological variation in these rocks. These Cambrian deep water rocks are intruded by dikes which tell of a younger volcanic history. More of that shortly. They're basic in composition and like the slates around them are deformed with a pronounced fabric. And they show evidence of vertical stretching broadly the same deformation as recorded by the surrounding slates. This dike is weakly boudinaged with light coloured quartz veins in the necking zone. But let's get back to the slate. These dark rocks are marked by light green elliptical spots. These represent sites where finely dispersed iron is in a reduced state. The normal purple slates are marked by the usual oxidized iron. So these are reduction spots and they commonly nucleate around small pyrite crystals and form halos that originally would have been spherical or circular in section. Pioneering Victorian geologist Henry Sorby recognised that the elliptical spots aligned with the cleavage so that cleavage could be demonstrated to be a deformation fabric and not, for example, a relic of bedding. So reduction spots were important for understanding cleavage development but also in the 20th century for more general understanding of 3D strain in rocks. 
I want to see if we can understand the deformation in the slate. A little bit of detail, not much, but a little. And let's look at some of these fallen blocks in here, which will give us some specimens. Here's a good one. So here's a really nice piece of slate. You can see the cleavage running down like this. And here's the cleavage plane. And if we look on the cleavage plane itself, there are these elliptical markers. They would have started life circular, spherical in three dimensions, and we can see they're now elliptical. So these are strain ellipses on the plane of the cleavage. Now if we go and look side on, so this is the cleavage running out parallel to my hands, and we can see we've got these green elliptical markers, and the ellipticity is really pronounced with a long axis up and down, and this way here, the short axis. So a strong ellipticity when viewed side onto the cleavage. And if we look on the cleavage plane itself, we can see the markers still elliptical, but the axial ratio between the long and short axes is less pronounced. So we can get the three dimensional shape of the strain associated with the cleavage. In the 1970s, structural geologist Dennis Wood worked out the 3D shape of the spots as strain ellipsoids and proposed a deformation history quantifying strain across the area. The approach was followed at the end of that decade by Mike Coward and Andy Siddons tracking strain in more detail across the region. So in fact a lot of pioneering work looking at strain analysis was done on these rocks using these spots. So a world of slate. Let's get out of the quarries and look at the context for all this deformation and this compression. With the weather improving, we're going to go up section into Ordovician rocks that lie stratigraphically on top of the Cambrian slates and hop over to Nantfrancon, the Ogwen Valley. Well, those mudstones, now slates, are overlain by a pile of volcanics, including the mountain of Triffon up there. We're going to take this path up to a really famous locality and look at the structure. These Ordovician volcanics were erupted by arc volcanoes and make for rugged landscapes, the famous peaks of the National Park. Much of the succession is made of welded ashes with volcanic breccias. These pale class are rhyolites. And there are spectacular ignobrites. This is the so-called pit's head tuff. So these rocks contain fabrics that are not just related to deformation, but to volcanic processes. But they're also cleaved, more readily seen in finer grain volcanoclastic successions. Still a steep cleavage, just like the underlying slates. Well, at least the rain has stopped. Breeze has picked up a bit though.
Well, this is something of a personal pilgrimage to me because this corner up here is the place that I made my first ever geological map. Anyway, let's go and have a look at what's up here. Wow, well this is Kumidwal. Let's sit down and look at the view. Well, this is a bit quieter. So, this is Kumidwal and it sits in the core of a sinful, it's inclined, comes down and up like this. So a nice big broad fold structure. Let's take a look at it. So we come down these slopes here, which are the Idwal Slabs, really famous rock climbing venue. Sweeps around the back of the valley there. The core of the fold is up there. That's Devil's Kitchen. And then the far limb sweeps up the hillside towards the hill of Igan that lies up there to the right. So broad fold structures. Let's get the published geological map through here and look at this on a cross section. Over here in the northwest is the outcrop of Cambrian slate. The rocks that overlie them are ore deficient volcanics with some small intrusions. We can add some bedding orientations to bring out the major folds. And this one, left of center, is the Idwal syncline. So let's sketch up a cross section across these folds. The large scale structure is simple, but the rock sequence isn't. Blobby, broadly strata bound intrusions, and lensy volcanics and volcanoclastic sediments. Folding this makes rather complex axial traces. The folds have a wavelength of around six to seven kilometers, and beneath lie the slates with their steep cleavage, broadly distributed strain. What lies deeper still isn't clear. So folds with a wavelength of several kilometers through here, upright folds, broad compression, and below, that's where the slate is, stratigraphically and structurally, and that deformation is picked up in the cleavage. So broad, simple, compressional tectonics, a really classic example of a slate belt. That's underneath, we're in these folds in the volcanics that were deposited on top. So slate belts, lots of compressional tectonics, no faults, just strain, and when you get into other units, really big scale folding. So very large scale penetrative deformation. And that's what characterizes slate belts.